For many of us, our first recollection of a flying car dates back to Saturday morning watching cartoons in front of the television. Wanting to produce something opposite to the Flintstones, who lived in a comical version of the Stone Age. Henry Smolensky and Al Blake embarked on a project to create a vehicle that could function as both a car and an airplane. Their vision was to construct a car that could be driven on regular roads to reach the airport, where it could transform into an aircraft by attaching the wings, tail fin, and motor. The car's internal controls would enable the pilot to operate all of the aircraft's control surfaces, facilitating its takeoff and flight like a conventional airplane. The car selected for the project was the subcompact Ford Pinto hatchback. With the car selected, the next step was to pair it with the plane. For the aircraft, they chose a twin-engine twin boom Cessna Skymaster. The idea was to only use the aircraft's rear pusher propeller to power a vehicle. During 1973, Avenue commenced a series of taxi tests at Van Nuys Airport and arranged for flight tests to take place at Naval Air Station Point in California. The plan was to utilize both the car's and the aircraft's engines for takeoff, after which the car's engine could be turned off once the vehicle was airborne. With brakes installed on all four wheels, the Mizar had the capability to halt within a distance of less than 525 feet. Following this, the airframe parts could be detached, and the car could be driven away like a regular vehicle. With plans to commence production in 1974, the initial selling price for the vehicle was set between $18,300 and $29,000, depending on the model. At present prices, this would translate to a range of $98,000 to $150,000, which is undoubtedly expensive. The Pinto, with its lightweight construction, seemed like an ideal choice for a flying car. However, when the airframe was added to it, the resulting weight was far too heavy. On September 11, 1973, with his primary test pilot unavailable, Henry Smolensky made the decision to test the vehicle with his business partner Harold Blake. Tragically, something went wrong during the flight, and the plane hit a tree before colliding with a pickup truck. Both Smolensky and Blake were killed instantly in the accident. This fatal crash brought an end of the Mizar project. The fact that the Mizar project did not endure for an extended period is regrettable, considering that the duo managed to persuade Ian Productions to include the car in the 1974 James Bond film The Man with the Golden Gun.